things, the authorities have been combing through footage from the scene with particular attention paid to CCTV pictures shortly before the bombs went off. And that work has paid off with not just one, but two suspects identified. Two men, one wearing a dark baseball cap and sunglasses, the, others with a, the other with a white cap, both walking among the crowd and both carrying backpacks believed to contain the bombs. The second suspect was seen setting down his backpack on the ground near the marathon finishing line. Here's how the news was announced by Richard Delorier, the FBI special agent in charge in Boston. Today we are enlisting the public's help to identify the two suspects. After a very detailed analysis of photo, video, and other evidence, we are releasing photos of these two suspects. They are identified as suspect one and suspect two. They appear to be associated. Suspect one is wearing a dark hat. Suspect two is wearing a white hat. Suspect two set down a backpack at the site of the second explosion just in front of the Forum restaurant. We strongly encourage those who were at the Forum restaurant who have not contact, contacted us yet to do so. As you can see, the quality of the photos is quite good, but we will continue to work on developing additional images to improve their identification value. And Special Agent Deloria stressed that while a member of the public might be able to identify the suspect, they should not approach them. Somebody out there knows these individuals as friends, neighbors, co-workers, or family members of the suspects. Though it may be difficult, the nation is counting on those with information to come forward and provide it to us. No bit of information, no matter how small or seemingly inconsequential, is too small for, for us to see. Each piece moves us forward towards justice. It is extremely important to contact us with any information regarding the identities of suspect one, suspect two, and their location. We consider them to be armed and extremely dangerous. No one should approach them. No one should attempt to apprehend them except law enforcement. So the FBI now hoping to further its investigation with any videos or photographs sent in by members of the public who were close to the scene of the bombings. And that information could prove crucial. Any pictures taken on the day will land on the desk of someone like Grant Fredericks. He's a forensic video analyst and an instructor at the FBI National Academy. This is just law enforcement 101. It's always been this way that crimes are solved because of the public's assistance. Uh, obviously because this is such an important case, they have images that provide easy identification. Uh, they're going to get these out to the public right away. But you've got tens of thousands of people, maybe more, providing you know digital photos of digital cameras, um, uh, mobile phone images. I mean, there's a danger of information overload. No, there's not. There is no such thing as too much evidence. Uh, there is not a danger of information overload. Obviously, they can prioritize what areas they look at, but if you look at the images that are currently, they have just been released, and I see them playing over and over again on television at the moment. This is a small area. They're coming from one location, going to another location. I know that the uh, authorities are looking for video in those other locations. They want to see where they go, uh, and they want to see where they've come from. Uh, that might provide additional information as to whether or not these people are working alone so there is no such thing as too much evidence the question of a timeline here is really important what happened before what happened during what happened afterwards yes that's critical the authorities need to know where they came from how they got there they need to be able to track them back as far as possible did they get out of a vehicle where they let off by somebody they need to know whether or not these people were uh, with others and they also need to build an investigation and, and one of conspiracy between two people because that's part of the criminal case is there potentially a problem here in the sense that it's very good that the public is able to provide information like this, but perhaps some people will be tempted to go too far and, and start to see themselves as sort of citizen detectives? Well, you know, we've seen in the past couple of days that there's a lot of Internet sites where people are trying to pick their own suspects, and that's extremely dangerous and not very helpful. You know, they're profiling people based on their own biases, uh, and it's not helpful to law enforcement. You know, it certainly uh, causes people to, um, to think that the, the authorities already have the pictures, so they shouldn't send theirs in. It also causes a lot of jeopardy for people, innocent people, who are identified by, you know, these, these wannabe detectives. So, you know, it's important to let the police do their job. And and to provide them, you know, as citizens, with, which is our duty, to provide them with uh, whatever evidence we might have 